Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about picky eaters. We're going to talk about seven tips to help you navigate this challenging world of picky eating in toddlers and kids. Hey, my name is Dr. Anna Maria Temple. I'm your holistic pediatrician on call. My specialty is eczema and my mission is to help empower, educate, and inspire families to raise healthy kids in this unhealthy world. In today's episode, we're going to tackle picky eating. Well, you may wonder like, what is my experience and what do I know about it? Well, aside from being a pediatrician for like 23 years, I also happen to have a 16 year old who used to be the pickiest of picky eaters. So not only do I practice the following tips in my practice, but I've also had to use them and try them out in my own family, some successful, some not. So hopefully you can learn some of the things and see what fits your family. Before we get to how to deal with the picky eaters, let's talk about are your kids in fact picky eating or maybe it's actually a growth issue and maybe you actually your expectations might be a little different what i mean by that is so when babies are young between ages and one between one between the ages of zero and one they go through a lot of growing and then after the age of one their growth slows down all right so let me pick out a page from my book healthy kids and unhealthy world where i can show you a diagram that's gonna illustrate this a lot better all right so if you look here, you'll see this arrow points to the ages between zero and one. You can see how steep the growth is. In other words, the kids are growing all the time. Now, if we go here, this is toddler world. This is when we're some days we're not growing. Some days we're growing a lot, but we go from steep curve to flatter curve. What does this mean? This means that toddlers have days when they're not growing a lot, so they're not gonna eat a lot because they don't need a lot of calories to live. Those are the days that they're gonna chuck their favorite broccoli at your head and their other foods. And then you're like, oh my gosh, you're so stressed out. And then the next day, because they are growing, they're eating everything. And you're like, oh my gosh, my sweet baby's back. This is not an issue. And then the following day, they appear picky again, but in fact, they're not growing, so they don't need as much food. Now, we also have to talk about fears before we tackle the seven steps of picky eating, because fear also prevents us to parent in the right way, shall we say, when it comes to picky eating, because we're afraid they're not gonna grow. However, I'm here to tell you that my child, we'll call him Evan, my pickiest one, who ate air, we're gonna get to that in a second, for a lot of his life because he didn't like any of the meals and I don't do second meals and I don't cater to him. He actually is my kid that is the tallest and the biggest out of the, all of them. And my other kid, who used to eat all the time, ate all the time, never had any issues, no selectives, actually shorter and smaller than his brother who ate air all the time. That's an example I realized of two kids. However, there's so much fear out there that if you don't feed your kids that they skip a meal, they're going to be short. And that's especially in boys. They're not gonna be strong. They're not gonna be tall. They're not gonna be fast. I'm here to tell you that fear is making you feed your kids different things that is propagating the picky eating issue. The next fear we need to talk about is that they're going to wake up at night from starvation. Now, if you have a child that has always been an awesome sleeper, sleeps great, skipping dinner is not going to cause them to wake up. The kids that have always had issues with sleeping, they don't eat dinner. They're waking up at night, not because they didn't eat dinner, because they've always had issues with sleeping. I've seen this in my practice so many times and so many parents are afraid that, and I'm like, when was the last time they woke up because they were hungry? They're like, actually never. So I'm like, it's a story you're telling yourself. It's not actually based on reality. And in 99% of the cases, that is true. The next fear is that if people find out that you allowed your child to skip a meal because they didn't want to eat, you're going to be thought of as a bad parent. You're not a bad parent and we don't care what everybody else says. You are not a bad parent. You're setting some rules and you're doing some consequences and you having follow through. That's it. We don't let our kids run in the road because that's bad. We don't let them eat junk because that's not good for them either. And then if they choose not to eat their dinner, that's okay. That's a choice they make. And you are not a bad parent because you're allowing them to make a choice to not eat when they're simply not hungry or they don't like the meal. That's all right. All right. And then the last fear whining kids whine and that's okay the kids are supposed to whine they're supposed to complain they're supposed to fight the regime because they're not supposed to love everything we do when your kids are whining and upset and they're like you're doing an amazing job you, our job is not to make our kids happy all the time our job is to raise humans that are productive members of society that are get good nutrition offered to them that they have clothes on their back or before their head and happiness is not 100% of the time is an adult life or in a child life. So do not be afraid of whining because the kids know 
which parents are afraid of screaming and whining, and those kids whine and scream louder than the kids whose parents don't care. This mama don't care. Let me tell you a funny story. I used to have the NASCAR. I still have them somewhere. The NASCAR headphones that I would put on my ears when the whining would begin because I was making dinner and they didn't like what I was making. So I would have my big headphones on because I was gonna listen to it. Just saying, a little extreme, but it worked. I didn't listen to them. Excellent, okay. So let's begin with step number one of reducing picky eaters in your home. Tip number one, family meals. If your toddler child sits by themselves at a table, that is very boring and that is not an experience and they don't wanna sit there and eat. And you go, oh, but I feed them while I'm running around doing a thousand other things. I hear you. I want you to put yourself in your toddler's position or your child's position. You sit down and the rest of the family is running around and you try to eat. You telling me that that is a relaxing atmosphere where you're enjoying your meal, you're savoring what you're eating and your digestion is going smoothly. No, you're stressed, you're annoyed, it's chaos. You try to eat as fast as you can. A lot of times you don't even finish your meals because you know, chaos is exploding around you. So the same thing goes for your children and your toddlers. When you're not sitting down in a calm, relaxed atmosphere to set the stage for a meal, they are likely to throw stuff and not eat because they crave parental attention. They crave a family meal. They crave the whole family sitting around them so they can eat together. Because remember, eating meals is an experience that we have together as a family okay also at the family table if you my parents are not eating vegetables your children are not going to eat vegetables if you my dear parents are eating fast food and you're expecting your children to eat salad that's not going to work so the only way that's going to work is if we are all eating together you have set the, to set the example because remember children don't listen to what we say they watch and follow everything we do next number two tip for picky eaters is screens. No screens at the table. No screens with a bottle, no screens when we're having breakfast, when we're having snacks. There should be no eating in front of screens. Long ago, we used to have just TVs and you're like, oh, I could just have a snack or TV. Right, okay, fine. Now we have TVs, computers, iPads, phones, iPhones, iWatches, all of it. So it's continuous. So now it's become something that starts bleeding into your everyday. Kids who eat with screens eat less fruits and vegetables than kids who don't eat with screens. And you may say, but when my child eats with I distract them. There should be no distraction to the food. We need to watch and understand what we're putting in our body and accept it rather than be distracted and tricked with a screen. Tip number three. We're gonna talk about portion size. A lot of times we think our kids are picky, but we're giving them too much food. For example, when I'm eating, I look at my two-year-old and I go, oh, okay, well, my portion size and their portion size should be equal. Okay, maybe a little less than mine. It's actually a lot less than yours. One rule of thumb is for, you can do one tablespoon per year of age for each part of the meal. So for meat, for a two-year-old, should be two tablespoons of chicken, two tablespoons of rice, two tablespoons of broccoli. For a three-year-old, we go to three tablespoons of each thing. If they eat that, they've eaten the minimum. If they want more, great. But a lot of time, it's a portion issue and we put too much on their plates because we're like, oh, they're hungry because I'm hungry. So I'm using my perspective to see what they're eating, especially when they're six and seven. A toddler is a little easier, but sometimes a six and seven-year-old, we think they should eat as much as we do. No, they're not. Children are not small adults. So be careful of the portion size. All right, tip number four, snacks. I'm sorry guys, but we are a snack culture. The United States since 1950s has brought snacks into our lives and now our children have snacks all the time. And you go, mm, I don't think I give my kids a lot of snacks. Wonderful. We are ex your exercise after this video. You're going to take a pad and a pen and every time your child puts anything in their mouth, you're going to write it down. Do a stick like, hmm, they ate a granola bite, boom. Oh, they ate uh, three crackers, boom. And then see how many ticks you got going on because I promise you most of us feed our kids snacks without being aware like when you're target shopping at uh, a doctor's office waiting even in my office I'm like kids this is not a restaurant so anyway I digress 
If we're going to talk to a friend, we're in the grocery store and in the line. If we don't want them to scream in Costco, if we're in the carpool line, if we're driving, if I mean, insert the time that you hand over a snack. I used to do the same thing. I would always have an entire bag of snacks because I don't want to, I didn't want to be interrupted in what I was doing. It was much easier to continuously feed them. And then I was wondering why they weren't eating. So a rule of thumb is this, there should be no snack two hours before dinner no snack two hours after dinner because my people are tricky they go well i'm not going to eat dinner and you go oh, okay fine but they always need a bedtime snack there's no such thing as a bedtime snack like that doesn't need that's not needed that's not nowhere but what is happening is like but and then you go but wait but it was a banana or it was an apple oh okay well then they can have that at dinner there's no reason that they have when they're waiting because what they do is they wait until they know the time that they're going to get a food that they like. So be careful of the snacks. And again, for my picky eater, we were able to only do half a banana or half an apple. Because remember, a banana, a full banana is an adult serving size. Half a banana is a five-year-old serving size. Half an apple is a five-year-old serving size and a quarter for a toddler. You see what I'm saying? And so when we are overfeeding them fruits, which is great, except we just ate an entire banana. So we ate four toddler. They ate four serving sizes of banana. And then they eat no other food variety because they're full on the banana. And then they cry before bed because they want milk. And now they had banana and milk. And that is not adequate nutrition for a toddler is in this example. So we want, if you're going to do a snack before dinner, yes, yeah, got to be a plant and it has to be the right portion size. If even with a plant, they're still refusing to eat dinner. That is your prerogative in my house. We took that away because we are my priority. That's we eat three meals a day. Snacks were not my priority. Three meals a day were my priority. And then of course, we just talked about the after dinner snack. And if, and as I said, which would go to point number five for picky eaters is that on their plate, if you're gonna put, let's say you're making a new dish tonight or a dish you know that they don't like, well, then you put a little bit of their meal on their plate and then you put a sure thing on so let's say like they like the banana so you do the chili let's say a little tiny bowl of chili and then you put the sure thing which is going to be a quarter or half of a banana so you know they're going to eat the banana they're not going to eat the chili thanks for coming no problem okay tip number five six six Tip number six is to get the children involved in meal planning. Well, what's happening? Meal prep. Sorry, not meal planning, meal prep. What do I mean by this? Well, okay. I want you to think about what are the steps in you. We'll just use dinner as an example. The steps in making dinner are you think about the meal, you go to the grocery store, and now you, ro I call it romancing the red peppers and the tomatoes and the pasta and the pasta sauce and the bread and all this other stuff. You thought about it. Now you go to the store and you choose it. You choose what it is now. You're also, again, still thinking about it. You come home, you start chopping the garlic and the onion, it starts smelling. You add the tomatoes, you boil the pasta. Maybe you're making garlic bread. You start making the salad. You're touching it. You're smelling it. You're creating. And then the last thing is you sit down and taste it. For our children, they're out doing whatever because we treat them like royalty and hotel guests. And so they're everywhere. And then when they come sit down at the table is when we give them the food and we tell them to eat it. They have not had the whole romantic experience of dinner. They are just told, sit down and eat your dinner. And that is very abrupt because the first encounter with the food they have is to taste it. While we have been thinking, touching it, feeling it, choosing it, we've had hours, days of romancing this food before we made the meal. Remember, eating is an experience. So one of the things you can do is you can take, you can have kids grow their own vegetables in the yard. Start out with a tomato plant, take them to the grocery store. I know the children are annoying, but you can make them pick the red vegetable, go find the a veggie that starts with letter C, or, you know, for the older kids, like have them help you choose the right fruits and vegetables. I promise you, I did that when my kids were like between six and 10. And when they started driving, they can go to the grocery store and pick the right fruits and vegetables when I needed for them to shop for me. So it will pay forward. It's going to be really painful in the beginning, but they'll pay forward. But when they're touching it, feeling it, now they're part of the experience. At home, in my Healthy Kids and Unhealthy World book, I give you 
all kinds of ideas on how to grocery shop and cook with your kids, no matter the ages, so we can get them all involved in the kitchen. I'll give you one example. Let's say you have a four-year-old. How's a four-year-old going to help you cook? Well, let's say you're doing broccoli and the four-year-old hates broccoli. Great. Well, the, all the four-year-old has to do is bring up a chair, stand on a stool, give them the broccoli. They just have to rip off all the little broccoli florets, florets put them in a bowl, you're going to drizzle olive oil, you're going to put some spices, and then the four-year-old with clean hands is going to toss the broccoli. They're smelling it, they're feeling it, they're using all their senses. Then the four-year-old is in charge of putting it on a baking sheet and you're putting it in the oven. When it comes out to the table, your four-year-old doesn't need to eat it. You're just going to put a one piece of broccoli like we talked about before, and then your child decides whether or not they're going to eat it. Children who cook in the kitchen eat more fruits and vegetables than children who don't. Again, it's a pain, it's annoying, it's exhausting, it's messy. However, it pays forward tons of dividends. Also, when they are teenagers or they're older, you can actually teach them how to make their make meals while you're at work or doing other things. Just remember, if you cater to your children and raise them as hotel guests, they're always going to be hotel guests. But if we train them from the beginning how to be productive members of the household, they'll help you with cooking and cleaning and shopping and it's going to make your life so much easier. All right. And then the last tip for my picky eaters, it is very difficult when we you don't like something and somebody gives you a giant bowl and you're like eat it. So, let me give you this example. Pretend that I'm going to I want you to eat sardines. I love sardines. I'm always trying to teach people how to eat sardines. But if I came to you and I gave you a giant bowl of dead fish, And I was like, "Hey, you need to eat sardines. They're amazing omega-3 and vitamin D. And you're going to grow taller and stronger and you're going to think uh better and your eyes are going to be less dry. And you're going to be like, "I understand the health benefits, but this is a giant bowl of dead fish and I'm not going to eat it." Okay, but what if I came to you and I gave you, I was like, "You know, we're going to eat sardines. I'll tell you all the health benefits and I'm just going to give you this much like I'm just going to cut like maybe a uh, half an inch of a sardine I'm going to smush it down put a little bit of uh lemon a little bit of salt and pepper all you have to do is take this one taste from this fork you're much more likely to give that a go than a giant bowl of dead fish remember that for your child a bowl of broccoli may look like a bowl of dead fish and to them that's not a big difference or a bowl of grapes or a bowl of strawberries so always start small when i work with selective eaters we always go you know what you just have to do one bite just have to do one bite and we're not going to fight over it that's just kind of the rule and we make it a game it's called plan points by the way all this information is in my amazing book so you don't have to like remember anything plan points is like for and you create a challenge you just have to taste 13 plants today And once we've hit 5 days in a row, you get a sticker or we go to the park or we read a book together or some whatever you decide to be make it a reward. But what it is is like we're not going to put pressure is like you eat it, you stay here. We're like no, we're going to take a bite of strawberry today and on their plate there's one bite of strawberry. Don't put six strawberries and take a bite of strawberry. One bite of strawberry in their lunch box, one little bit of red pepper. At dinner, one little bit of broccoli. and let them decide on how they're going to do it but start really small. Well, I can go on with so many more tips. However, you have all this lovely information in my healthy kids in non-healthy world. I hope this video was helpful and it gave you some tools and tricks on how to start working with your picky eater. And from this day forward, your next challenge is we're not going to call them picky eaters anymore. We're not going to tell people we have picky eaters. We have selective eaters. Just remember when we call our children picky and we tell them they're picky, then we set an expectation and they're going to rise to that expectation. Oh, they're picky, they won't eat anything. So they only eat pizza they only eat chicken nuggets when well, the kid goes well i only eat chicken nuggets and i only eat pizza because they're hearing this over and over and that becomes part of their subconscious it is our job to change the terminology as well oh they're selective eaters they're just exploring different different tastes in order to experiment with which flavors they like most that is much more positive and it sounds cheesy but we are now setting our children up for success because we're telling their subconscious there's nothing wrong with them they're just selective they're just experimenting and experiencing just like we experience the world every single day i hope this video was helpful don't forget to subscribe to my channel don't forget to grab yourself a copy of my best selling book healthy kids in non healthy world from amazon and leave me comments and suggestions so i can help you with less anxiety and healthier kids see you guys next time